4K resolution may be all the rage now, but for most of us gamers, it's still an unattainable ideal floating outside our grasp. And that's because gaming hardware simply hasn't had enough time to play catch up with this resolution's sudden appearance. Of course, the high-end cards can run games in 4K with decent frame rates. But let's face it, most people don't have high-end graphics cards. However, we are nothing if not adaptable. So if you want an upgrade over your 1080p monitor, but you don't want or can't handle 4K, there's still one other option for you, the 1440p resolution. It's also commonly referred to as 2K, which is technically incorrect, but don't let that stop you from using it. We certainly won't since it rolls right off the tongue much better than WQHD. This resolution is a great middle ground between Full HD and 4K. 4K, offering improved visuals that are still manageable by all but budget pieces of hardware, and even leaving room for improved performance like higher refresh rates. And in this video, we'll be highlighting 11 of the best 1440p monitors out there, from budget variants without any extra features to high-end models that you'll be surprised to find cost more than even some 60-inch 4K TVs. The first four entries will be dedicated lower refresh rate monitors, so if you're looking for a budget solution, then these are the ones for you. So without any further ado, let's begin. First up, we have a solid budget 1440p monitor, the Lenovo L24Q. It's rather easy on the eyes, what with the sleek silvery exterior and slim bezels, but it's also a monitor you wouldn't guess is 2K based only on the exterior, as the size of its display extends only 23.8 inches. Now this obviously has both its pros and cons. The cons are that having a larger resolution lets you use a larger monitor, so there's no need to get stuck at 24 inches. But the biggest pro is that even if you need to play a very demanding game in 1080p, it won't look bad on a monitor of this size. Plus, the pixel density will be amazing, maximizing the eye candy that the IPS panel already excels at providing. Just know, however, that the Lenovo L24Q is very limited in terms of connectivity and adjustability. It only features one HDMI and one display. Display port, and it only has tilt adjustability. What's more, there's no Visa support to speak of. However, if these limitations don't bother you, then the L24Q is an amazing choice. The next monitor on this list, the Acer G257HU, is very similar to the L24Q, but with a couple of slight improvements. We're again dealing with a 60Hz 1440p IPS monitor, only this time it's slightly larger, standing in at 25 inches. This way you're getting a bit more out of the higher resolution, but still without being too far off to reap the full benefits of 1080p. Plus, it has a DVI port in addition to the HDMI and a display port. We don't feel the need to bemoan the absence of a DVI port in this day and age, but it's certainly a welcome addition in a budget model like the G257HU. It also has speakers, but like all built-in speakers, these aren't really good enough for anything. There is, once again, no Visa support, which hurts this monitor more because it has a somewhat flimsy stand. However, if you don't need Visa support and you'd like to have a slightly larger display, the G257 is still an excellent choice. Now this is where the fun begins for the budget models. Introducing the ViewSonic VA2719. It's only marginally more expensive than the previous two models, but it does come with a couple of extra features. Nothing major, of course, but still more than welcome. For example, it has an IPS panel as good as the one so far, but on a 27-inch screen. This size won't let you revert to 1080p as smoothly, but it is considered the ideal size for 1440p monitors. And frankly, it's much more immersive. What's more, while the stock stand still only supports a tilt adjustment, this monitor does have the benefit of being compatible with 100x100 Visa mounts. It also has more powerful speakers than the Acer, but this still doesn't really mean anything. Built-in speakers are good to have as a short-term fallback option, but nothing more. In many ways, the ViewSonic monitor is what most people have in mind when they think 2K monitor, mostly thanks to its size. We should note that it has only one HDMI and one DisplayPort as far as connectivity is concerned, so if this if this is a problem, then give it a pass, but if not, the ViewSonic VA2719 may very well be the most cost-effective budget 2K monitor. 
and we only say it may be the most cost-effective option because it has to contend with the likes of the AOC Q3279 VW FD8. We'll just call it the AOC from now as we're sure it will be less painful for all parties involved. And quite a few things help separate the AOC from the previous models. First, there is the size. This monster, this monitor is a genuine monster, coming in at 32 inches. It also features an IPS panel, only this time with a slightly increased refresh rate of 75 Hz, which is always a welcome feature. And it even has AMD FreeSync to ensure your frame rate is stable and free of any and all screen tearing. There are other things that go in its favor as well, for example having a dual link DVI-D and a VGA port in addition to the HDMI and a display port. But it does take a step backwards in the end when it comes to the Visa support, as there's none to speak of. We didn't find this to be a problem in the first two entries, just something worth mentioning. But the AOC can easily be seen as too large for comfortable desktop viewing, so it would genuinely benefit the most from having the Visa support. Still, if 32 inches isn't too large for you, then there really isn't a reason not to go with the AOC. But unless you've used a 32 inch monitor before, we suggest you do your research before committing to it. For starters, we've left a link in the description to our very own video on the best monitor size for gaming, so make sure to watch it if you're considering buying this monitor. And next up, we have another entry by AOC. This time, it's the Aegon AG241QX, which we'll simply call the Aegon. In case you haven't been keeping up, this is the fifth entry, meaning that from now on, we'll be dealing exclusively with 144Hz monitors. So if you're a high-performance gamer, buckle up. The Aegon is nothing if not fit to kick this trend off, as it's a monitor that values performance above all else thanks to its TN panel. It's because of this panel that you can get 144Hz monitor with this resolution and a response time of only one millisecond at a fairly reasonable price. But as is always the case with TN monitors, this increased performance comes at the cost of visuals. Most notably, a very underwhelming color reproduction to say the least, and poor viewing angles. The Aegon is available in both 24 and 27 inch variants, both of which are equipped with FreeSync. It has all the ports in the world with two HDMI ports and one each of DisplayPort, DVI, and VGA. Plus, it has a nifty USB hub on it with four USB 3.0 ports. It has built-in speakers, but that's all you need to know about them. And last, but certainly not least, it's very adjustable, with the stock stand supporting tilt, height and swivel adjustments, and the monitor even supporting visa mounting. When all is said and done, the only downside of this monitor is the subpar color reproduction of the TN panel. So if you value performance over visuals, then it may very well be the best monitor there for you. Now, if you don't want to deal with the poor visuals of TN panels, but you still want a 144Hz monitor, well, we've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is the Asus MG279Q can make this dream a reality, as it's one of those rare 1440p 144Hz IPS monitors. The bad news is you'll need very deep pockets in order to do this. But if your wallet can handle it, you won't regret choosing this monitor. Nothing short of 4K can compare to gaming on a 27 inch monitor in 2K at a high refresh rate to boot. The only aspect of which it lags behind the Aegon is the response time, simply due to the IPS panel not being able to handle response times under 4 milliseconds due to technological limitations. Now if you've never used a 1 millisecond monitor, then you won't miss this feature and the eye candy will more than make up for it. But if you have, then you'll have to think long and hard about where your gaming priorities lie. As far as adjustability is concerned, the MG279Q is second to none. Not only is it fully adjustable, meaning you can adjust the tilt, pivot, swivel, and height, but it also supports 100x100 100 100 Visa mounts, in case you've ascended beyond regular desktop gaming. It does, however, fall a bit behind the Aegon in terms of connectivity, with two HDMI ports, one regular and one mini display port, and only two USB 3.0 ports. It's also got built-in speakers, but honestly, who cares? So the bottom line is this. The MG279 Q is an excellent monitor that features both incredible visuals and a high refresh rate that's eclipsed only by the high price tag.
Now if you've liked what the Asus had to offer but you also like your monitors curvy, then you'll love the MSI Optics MAG27CQ. This is also a 27 inch 144Hz monitor, only with the added benefit of a 1800R curve for the added immersion. However, it's not exactly like the Asus in all other regards, as the Optics isn't an IPS monitor, but a VA monitor. VA panels are still better than TN ones at color reproduction, but they're not quite as good as IPS panels. They do, however, handle contrast better than IPS panels, so, you know, pros and cons. The response time is still capped at 4 milliseconds, which is what the Optics has. The stock stand supports all types of adjustability that a curved monitor should, so no pivot adjustability. And that monitor can be mounted to wall thanks to 75 by 75 visa support. We only wish it featured a USB hub of any kind, since most other monitors in this price range have one, but this isn't something that will make or break the monitor for you. As for the connectivity, it comes with one HDMI, one DVI, and one DisplayPort. Overall, the optics rivals the Asus in terms of visuals, so if you're looking for a curved 2K monitor, we can't think of a better pick than the MSI Optics MAG27CQ. Now, we felt it's only appropriate to feature an extra large monitor that isn't capped at a lower refresh rate like the first AOC. And here it is, the LG 32GK650F or as we like to call it, the LG. This 31.5 inch monitor comes with the same well-balanced VA panel that the MSI Optics used, packing both performance and visuals at a fairly approachable price. And it has free sync. The only difference really, aside from the fact that one is curved and the other one is large, is the fact that LG is slower by a millisecond, quite literally. A response time of five milliseconds isn't the worst, console gamers usually have it way worse, but it is something to take note of. In terms of connectivity, the LG is keeping it simple with just one HDMI and one DisplayPort. Again, we don't really mind the lack of further variety here, but we grieve the absence of a USB hub. Also, when we were talking about the first AOC, we said that it may be too big for comfortable desktop use, and the same certainly applies here. However, the LG has the added benefit of supporting any 100x100 Visa mount, and with a large enough distance between you and the monitor, this problem just disappears. Although if you do plan on using it in a desktop environment, environment, you'll be glad to know that it comes with a pretty good stand that's fully adjustable. So all in all, if you're looking to go big, then the LG is a great choice. Toppled perhaps only by the other LG monitor we'll be showcasing on this list, but we'll get to that later. For now, just make sure that you have a proper gaming environment to make the size of the LG its strength and not its weakness. And now for a brief change of pace, we have another TN monitor for you. This time it's the Dell S2417DG. This monitor may seem very unassuming, more like your standard office monitor than one that's geared towards gamers, but as the saying goes, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. So what's between the covers? Well this time we're dealing with a 24 inch TN monitor that comes with everything TN panels are known for. High refresh rate, one millisecond response time, and we want to say affordable price, but that isn't really true. Not that that's the panel's fault, however. No, the reason this monitor is so much more expensive than most TN monitors, like the AOC Aegon, is that it comes packed with the NVIDIA G-Sync. Other than that, it's pretty much the standard fare. Fully adjustable stock stand, 100x100 Visa mounting, USB hub with four USB 3.0 ports, and true, the monitor only has a single HDMI port and a single display port, but if you're gunning for the best performance a 1440p monitor can have, the lack of a dual link DVI-D port is hardly going to be a deal breaker. So basically, if you want the fastest 1440p monitor around to go with your high-end NVIDIA graphics card and you don't mind the poor visuals, there is no monitor quite like the Dell, at least until OLED monitors become more affordable. We've mentioned that there would be a second monitor by LG, and here it is, the 32GK850G. It's more or less the same as the previous monitor by LG, except this one has G-Sync. It's not the only difference, but it's not far from it either. Namely, this LG has a USB 3.0 hub with three ports, where the last one had nothing. But that's also where the differences end. As for the similarities, let's jog your memory, shall we? We're dealing with a 31.5-inch monitor here using a VA panel 
panel that's somewhat of a middle ground between TN and IPS panels. Of course, it has a refresh rate of 144Hz, but it is stuck with a response time of 5 milliseconds. As far as connectivity is concerned, there's only one HDMI and one DisplayPort in addition to the USB hub, and thankfully it supports Visa mounting, so it can be viable despite its humongous size. Also, it's got a fully adjustable stock stand. If you can get enough distance between you and the monitor, it's great, but make sure that you do because this LG is more expensive thanks to its G-Sync. So realizing you don't like it after the fact would be an even bigger waste. And now for the final boss of all 1440p monitors, we give you the Acer Predator XB271HU. If you want the best gaming monitor that has it all and you don't care about the price, well, tough luck, but you'll have to make some compromises until we start getting good OLED monitors. But in the meantime, there is no better monitor than the Acer Predator. This beautiful 27-inch IPS display has stunning visuals, high refresh rates, and G-Sync to make sure you're having the best gaming experience a 2K monitor could offer. We're sure it would even have a response time lower than 4 milliseconds if that were possible, but for now 4 milliseconds will do until OLED becomes more affordable. It keeps the connectivity simple like the previous LG with only one HDMI and one display port and a USB hub with four USB 3.0 ports for the added convenience. It supports 100x100 100 100 Visa mounting and you can do whatever you so desire with the stock stand like tilt, pivot, swivel and race. In fact, the only thing that's unimpressive about it is the built-in speakers, proving once and for all that a monitor won't have good speakers even if you pay an arm and a leg for it. Still, if you're seeking perfection, know that no 1440p monitor out there is closer to reaching it than the Acer Predator. If you need the best performing monitor, then the Dell and even the AOC Aegon will serve you better. But if you want the most stunning visuals 2K can offer you, nothing beats the Acer Predator. In fact, our only gripe with it, seeing as the one million second response time simply isn't possible is the lack of HDR, which we don't feel would be asking for too much given the high price of this monitor. And that about does it for this video. Normally this is where we'd give you some tips on buying the mess monitor for your specific needs, but since the video is already very long, and since there's more to monitors than other gaming peripherals, we'll instead leave you with plenty of links in the description to videos that explain everything you need to know about monitors. We've already mentioned the one about size, and there are also links to videos about refresh rates, response times, panel types, types of ports, you name it. There's even one where we compare 144Hz monitors with 240Hz monitors, which should give you an idea of why there aren't any 240Hz monitors in this video. Or if you're short on time and you'd rather have an all-in-one tutorial, we've got you covered as well. Just follow the link titled All-in-One. Anyway, we hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you did, and let us know if we've missed a particularly good monitor in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos regularly, so make sure to click on the bell icon if you want to stay up to date. In the meantime, Mirror Games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.